Welcome to the Lovestead. Hello, Booktube. Welcome back or to Lady Love Said Reads. My name is Jessica, and this is my November 2021 reading wrap up. November was a really busy month for me personally, and I kind of hit a bit of a reading slump. There were several readathons and things going on that I was trying to do, and I just pretty much failed at them. I did get some books read and we will go through them here today. First was Roses and Rot by Kat Howard. This is a like new adult, not quite young adult, um, but a new adult fantasy and it's also kind of dark academia. So what happens in Roses and Rot is these two sisters are both artists of some kind. One is a writer, the other is a ballet dancer and they come from a really abusive home life. Their mom is terrible. So these two sisters get accepted to this institute called Melody, and it's like this institute where you can spend like a certain amount of time there. I think it's six weeks. Um, so you spend time there. It might, might even be a year. I don't remember exactly. And while you're there, you get to work with a mentor and really develop your craft. And when they get there, they quickly discover that there is much more to Melody than meets the eye, that there are some supernatural and magical things that are happening. And it is a pretty decent story. Um, you know, I'm reflecting on like my favorite books of the year and, you know, books that have stuck with me um, in 2021 since we are moving into the end of 2021. And I can say that this book isn't one of them. Like, it's harsh, but it's just not. Um, I listened to this book on audiobook and I liked the story. I liked the vibes. I liked the characters. There were some lines in this book that were really kind of deep and interesting to think about. But when I reflect back on the year, it's not a book that comes immediately to mind as being a standout. If you like dark academia and you like fae and fairy lore, you might really, really like this. Um, I thought it was fine. I mean, I would still recommend it to, to certain readers. I don't know that I'll ever read it again. We'll see. Um, but I ended up giving this three stars out of five. Next, I read Night Broken by Patricia Briggs. This is book eight in the Mercy Thompson series. And in this book, Mercy is married to Adam, who is the alpha of the local werewolf pack, and Adam's ex-wife, Christy, has come back to town because this guy is stalking her and is like really scary and dangerous. So she comes to Adam for help because Adam has connections with like special forces and private security and things like that. Naturally, this causes tension because she's Adam's ex-wife and Mercy is now married to Adam and Chrissy comes in and she's trying to like take over the household and act like she owns the place again and like Mercy's just trying to keep her temper in check. I like this book. This definitely picked up from the last two books in the series that I didn't really love and I'm glad to see the direction that this one is taking. It gives me hope for the next book in the series. I liked the dynamics between the family and getting to see them navigating life as a family and managing the conflict that Christy brings to the family. I like the new bad guy. Patricia Briggs creates like a whole new kind of monster to be the bad guy in this book and I liked that. My only issue is still that she's using some cultural appropriation still. So Joe Coyote comes back in this one and then even the monster that she created is a little bit of appropriation. So I don't like how Patricia Briggs uses elements of certain culture, particularly Native American culture and indigenous culture, as plot devices in her work. I just, I really, I don't love that. Um, but that was really my only major complaint about this one. As I said, I think it is getting back to um, the quality of the series that I liked originally, and so I'm looking forward to reading the next book. I hope the next book in the series is even better. I did give this one three stars out of five also. For nonfiction November, I read What If Jesus Was Serious by Sky Jathani. This is a work of nonfiction 
it's Christian fiction, or not fiction, Christian nonfiction, and it's doing a deep dive study of the Sermon on the Mount. And I've said this in many vlogs, but what I like about this is that the chapters are very short and manageable. So there's an entire chapter. So you really can just like think about a concept, think about a passage from the scripture, digest it, chew on it, and then move on um, to the next chapter. So it gave me a lot to think about. It gave me some things that I realized I need to work on in my own faith walk. And I thought that the theology was pretty sound as well. Now I am I'm no by no means an expert in theology, but from what I understand of theology, I feel like this was pretty um, theologically accurate. <laughs> Other people know more than me, for sure. Um, but yeah, I ended up really liking this. And what did I rate it? Let me check my Goodreads. Yeah, I gave it four stars out of five. Next, I read Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a horror novella, and I read it for Indigathon. And I did not like this book. I mean, I think that I can see the literary quality of it. Like, I can understand uh, why it might be considered a great work of contemporary literary fiction. More so than horror. I don't know. Um, my general overall feeling with this book is that it just left me feeling really sad. I can't really say a whole lot more about it because it is a novella, it's so short, but the premise of it is that this group of preteens, they're like 12, 13 years old, they find a mannequin that they play with and the um, they eventually like outgrow the mannequin and you know quit playing with the mannequin as a toy and one of the kids thinks that the mannequin has come to life and then a lot of really terrible things happened from that point on and it just it just was really it was it was sad it was sad it nothing about it made me feel like I enjoyed the read <laughs> it just left me feeling like it took me to a place I didn't really want to go and left me there like uh, hello? What? <laughs> I gave this book like 2.5 stars out of 5. On Goodreads I rounded it up to 3 because I don't like to be mean to authors. But yeah, it's like a 2, 2.5 read. Next I read The Phantom of the Opera and this was a buddy read that I read with my friend Becca at Becca Woodard and her information is down below. This is a gothic classic. And it was really interesting to read this right after reading Night of the Mannequins to kind of compare these different styles of horror. Night of the Mannequins is more of like a slasher horror and Phantom of the Opera is definitely more gothic horror. And I much preferred the gothic horror. I really, really enjoyed Phantom of the Opera. It made me laugh. It made me raise my eyebrows. And I loved the atmosphere that was created. I just, I think I really, really like gothic literature, classic gothic literature. Any kind of classic gothic lit that I've read, I have really liked it. There are some parts in Phantom of the Opera that I felt like could have been better edited. Some of it felt a little bit unorganized um, coming from these different points of view because it's what happens and what it's about is there's a Paris opera house that is supposedly haunted by this ghost. And so it's a story of this ghost told from reports from different people. So like the theater owners give a report, um, one of the theater managers gives a report. And so it's kind of epistolary, but not really epistolary. And sometimes the points of view line up kind of weird or they include information that's not necessarily relevant or just it did feel a little unorganized and haphazard in that way but overall I thought you know once you could see the story arc kind of play out across these different narratives um, it, it was really interesting and I mean there was so much that I could take away from it I definitely want to reread it I have never seen the musical the Andrew Lloyd Andrew Lloyd Webber musical version of the Phantom of the Opera, so I will be adding that to my list of media I need to check out. 
Um, and I did end up giving this one four stars out of five. Actually, I think it was a 4.5 out of five. The last book that I read in November was another buddy read, and it was Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I buddy read this with my friend Johara at the Witchy Reader. This is set in the Grishaverse universe, which is Shadow and Bone. If you've seen Shadow and Bone on Netflix, it's that same universe. In terms of timeline, I believe it takes place after the Shadow and Bone trilogy. And it is about a group of misfits and criminals. And they form a band to do a heist that will earn them lots and lots of money. I really liked this book. It's told from multiple points of view and there are so many romances in this. The relationships between the characters in this book is what carried the book for me. The plot is fairly slow burn but I really loved the character development and their relationships. It was the relationships for me. Such good depictions of different kinds of relationships from platonic relationships to paternal to brotherly relationships to romantic relationships, conflict within relationships, trauma. Like, I think this is much more of a romance than it is a fantasy. I would say it's a, it's a fantasy romance instead of just a fantasy adventure, if you were going to ask me. But maybe that's just because that's what I liked the most about it was the romance elements and the relationship elements within the story. I don't know. Story of found family. I love the found family trope. This also has some really nice gothic vibes in it and just I really liked it overall. Definitely one that I will reread and I also gave this one four stars out of five. That's all I read in November. For me it's not a lot. I usually read many more books than what I got through this past month and December's not looking a whole lot better because December has also been quite busy. I've been on jury duty, we've got the holidays, we've got work stuff going on. Um, so, so far in December I've only read like three books so, you know. The way I look at it is I met my goal of 100 books and I met that goal back in like August. So since I met that goal, you know, it's it's not like I'm trying to cram in a bunch of books to meet a reading goal. Anyway, I'm rambling. That is my wrap up for November. If you've read any of these books and have thoughts, let me know your thoughts down below. If, if you have recommendations for me based on what I loved here and you think of other books that I might love, leave those recommendations in the comments down below. And if you just want to leave me an emoji to let me know you stopped by, go ahead and leave me the ghost emoji for Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Until next time, make sure that you continue to read good books, drink good coffee, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye!